Hello everyone, let's talk about finding the exact sum for this series. This series, if you look at its form, it has a similar form to the, um, the McClellan series for the cosine function. And so uh, let's write down the McClellan series for the cosine function and then try to compare that with this one and see how similar they are. So first, let's just recall that cosine of x is equal to its McClellan series, and its McClellan series is going to be the summation from n starting from 0 to infinity. Now the alternating factor, which is like the 1 to the n, and then uh, for the x, we have x to the 2n, and then divided by 2n factorial. Okay, so that's the McClellan series for the cosine. Now, if we just try to compare this, this McClellan series with the series that we have here and then see how similar they are. First, we have the same alternating factor, like the one to the n, like the one to the n right here. So they're the same. And then we also have that 2n quantity factorial. We also have that in the denominator. Now, the, the thing that's different is that we do not have a variable here. If we have a variable, then we cannot really find the sum, right? Because the x is the uh, the variable here. It depends on what number that you plug into the x so that you can find the sum. Otherwise, you cannot really find the sum. Or you can say that the sum is a function, which is the cosine, right? But then here, we have some stuff raised to the 2n. And then in the denominator, we also have some stuff raised to the 2n. So if we are to put that together, then we actually have pi divided by 3, and then that fraction raised to the 2n power. So doesn't that look like x to the 2n power? Yeah, so everything here actually will match with whatever that we have here for the McClellan series. Um, there is also another difference is that we are, instead of starting from n equals 0, we are starting from n equals 3. So we also need to take care of that. Okay, so just keep that in mind that we need to make some adjustment regarding the starting of the turns, right? And so uh, let's just look at uh, this series right here. Let's just write out a few turns right here and see what's going on. So if we are writing out a few turns for this one, then it's going to look like 1 and then minus x squared over 2 factorial plus uh, x to the fourth. Right? It's all even powers right here, and then 4 factorial. Mm -hmm. And as you can see here, whatever exponent that you have, you are going to put that at the bottom, and then factorial. That, right? So, and then you have minus x to the 6 over 6 factorial plus x to the 8, and then 8 factorial, then minus x to the 10. I'm just writing out more turns right here, but then it probably doesn't really matter right how many turns that i'm writing i just want to write out at least five or six turns so that we can see what's going on um so for the first turn this first turn right here corresponds to n equals zero. Second turn here corresponds to n equals one okay next one n equals two n equals three n equals four and then yeah, n equals 4 here, and then n equals 5, right, and so on, because we're starting from 0. Now, what this one actually means is that we need to start at n equals 3. So that means we do not have those, those first three turns that we have here compared to this McClellan series. And so now if we just look at this one, let's just manipulate this one. Let's start manipulating this series right here. So if we start manipulating it, then we can write it as what infinity, right? We just don't stop. We just keep adding all the turns and then n starting from three. And then we can just try to write this expression right here in the form of the McClellan series. And so we have leg the one to the end. So that's what we put in the front. Okay. And then <clears throat> We just need to figure out how to put the pi to the two n and then three to the two n together. And actually, all we can, all we need to do is to um, just bring that to the top, right? So it will become what if you bring that to the top. But so you just need to remember that 
even when we bring this to the top, it's still having uh, it's still in the denominator, right? So we are actually going to get pi to the two n, okay? And then if you bring the three to the two n to the top, it becomes what? It becomes three to the negative two n, right? Because you are going to negate the original exponent. And then now for the denominator, it's going to be just the two n quantity factorial. So we have that. And then now what's next? We actually want to put all this together. So if we are to put it together, then we are going to get what? Um, I think we need to do one more step before we do that, right? So it will be easier. If we do something like this. So we are not going to touch the pi to the two n. So we'll just leave it and we can, <clears throat> To combine them, we actually want the same exponent. And so they are not the same right here. This is 2n, that's like the 2n. So it would be a good idea to write it as some stuff raised to the 2n exponent. How do we do that? It actually becomes 3 to the minus 1, and then 2n. You see what's going on here? Instead of having negative 2n, I actually can write it as 3 to the negative first power, and then raised to the 2n power. And then just copy the denominator. Okay, so now because those two factors, they have the same exponent, we can actually put the pi and the three to the negative first power together. So it becomes pi times three to the negative first power, which is pi over three. So we are going to get negative one to the n, and then this one, it will become Okay, so as I said, it will become pi over three. Okay, so the exponent on the outside would just be two n because we are putting them together. So it will become pi over three. Yeah, and then at the bottom, we didn't do anything, right? So just leave it. Okay, so now if you look at the series right here, it actually has the same form as this McClellan series right here, where the x is equal to pi over three in this case. Then so you may say, okay, so because that series converges to cosine, right? And then now we can just change this one into cosine, plug in the pi over three, we get the sum. Uh, not that simple because we do not really have the same series right here. As you know, we are starting at n equals zero for this um, for this cosine here, right? But then we are starting at n equals three. And so the question is, how do we actually um, use that, right? Because they do not have the same starting value for the n. So we need to do a little bit of the adjustment so that we can actually turn the starting value into a zero, okay? So how do we do that? And so you know that, um, let's just go back to here. So you know that for um, this series we, right here, when we start at n equals zero, we are having just this term, right? When, <clears throat> I mean, when we start at n equals zero and we go all the way to infinity, we are having this term and then including all the other terms. But when we start at n equals one, we do not have this one right here anymore. We actually will have the first term as negative x squared over two factorial and then the rest of the terms. Right. So now if you just look at the starting value at n equals three, that's just really saying that instead of having the one, having the negative x squared over two factorial, having the x to the fourth over four factorial for this series right here, we can actually say that um, actually including all the, the rest of the turns, right? This, starting from negative x to the 6 over 6 factorial, we actually have that as this. So now, how do you rewrite the cosine, right? How do you rewrite the McClellan series for the cosine? We can actually write it. as one, 
minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial. And then because the rest of the stuff is equal to the series right here, so we all we need to do is to add the series. I think I need more space for that. So it's to add the series. So now if we are to obtain an expression for this one, all we need to do is to solve for this series right here. That means we got to isolate this. How do we isolate this? We can move the one, the negative x squared over two factorial and then the x to the fourth over four factorial to the left side of the equation. So if we are isolating it, then we are going to get then we are going to get this. It would become cosine x, okay? Minus one plus x squared over two factorial minus x to the fourth over four factorial. So now this series right here is equal to cosine x minus one plus x squared over two factorial and then minus x to the fourth over four factorial. And remember that this series is actually now the same thing as this series with x being pi over three. So now, because we have already obtained the expression for this series here, and then all we need to do is to replace this by this expression on the left-hand side of this equation. And then, of course, we got to plug in the pi over 3 to do the calculation. So now, what is the sum for this series here? It's going to be, we need more space, so let me move all that stuff. So we'll move all that stuff here. Okay, so now we have what? Let's see. We have cosine of x. Now I'm just going to leave it blank for now. And then we have minus one, then plus blank over two factorial minus blank to the fourth power over four factorial. And then, so what do we need to fill inside the blanks? Those blanks are all x's, right? And then we now know that x is equal to pi over 3. So we are going to put pi over 3 into all those blanks. So we have pi over 3 here, pi over 3, and then pi over 3. And then that's our sum. And then, of course, we can calculate this one. Uh, if we are to calculate, we can just spend a little bit of time doing the calculation here, cosine of power of three, that's one over two, okay? And then minus one, and then plus, um, we get pi square, okay? And then we get nine, nine times two is 18. And then minus, okay, so we get pi to the fourth power. And then we get three raised to the fourth power, that's 81, right? That's 81, 81 times the four factorial, four factorial, what is four factorial? That's 24, right? Three times two is six, six times four is 24. So we get 81 times 24. And then um, just continue to simplify here. Then we are going to get leg the one over two, right? One minus one, one half minus one. And then plus pi square over 18. And then minus, what is that? That's 81 times uh, 24, which is 1,944. And then we get pi to the four. So that's the sum for this series here. Okay, so that's it for this problem. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and then give me a like and leave me a comment if you can. And then also please check out my other math videos. Thank you for watching.